school's out, but not for this old girl. I'm just getting started on my summer promo refinishing series. If you were born before 1970, this one may look a little familiar. With its solid wood frame, this desk has certainly seen better days. And with a new generation of kiddos about to start school, it's time to give this little desk an absolute makeover. So stick around, let's get started. My name is Katerina, and I live in a small town in beautiful northern Alberta. I restore and refinish furniture, both for myself and for clients. Welcome to my shop. So this summer, I ran a Save the Labor promotion. And sure enough, it was an absolute success. And I was booked up within four hours of me posting that announcement. So this is one of the seven projects that I have in this summer promotion series, where I work on an assortment of pieces and share my process with you guys. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I am not a big fan of using stripper. I don't enjoy it. It's really messy. It's really super smelly. I can't do this indoors. I just really hate the whole process of it. But some projects are just easier to work with after you've stripped them down. And this is one of those projects. So on this project, I'm choosing to use the Super Remover. It is in a gel formula. So it makes putting it onto the arms and legs really easy. It will stick without running off of the piece. The downside to this is that it is really super flammable and also really intensely smelly. So this is definitely a project that I have to complete outdoors. One thing I did learn using this stripper, and I did do this wrong, was that once you apply this stripper, it's generally best to not touch the stripper. And that is because once you've applied it, it creates a vapor barrier over top of the project, over top of the paint. And it's recommended not to touch it because then once that vapor barrier is broken, the rate at which the product is able to work decreases and it's not working as efficiently then. So that was my bad. I ended up moving this product around a lot simply because this is not my regular go-to stripper. Normally I use circa 1850 and that I can get away with moving it around to continue its activation. So my bad, you learn something new every project. That was something I learned with this one. For the most part, this stripper did a fairly decent job at removing the layers of paint that were on this piece. Scraping paint off of a piece while using stripper is honestly the most satisfying thing in the world. And it is probably the only reason I continue to use stripper to this day. This is the part of the project that starts to get really fun for me, the taking apart part of the project. 
I have always been someone who has been very hands-on with everything that I do in life. And that is one of the reasons why I love what I do so much. When I'm able to tinker and play around and discover and learn new things about something, it really engages me in the process. And then I get really hyper-focused on completing the task. There's really no guidebook for how to take things apart. For this project, I wasn't actually quite sure where to begin. So I just started with the screws and started cleaning out any of the gunk that was left over from paint that had gotten in there and I wasn't able to remove or see when I had washed it down and just slowly taking things apart and trying to remember where everything would go back when I began to put it back together. There's a lot that's going to happen to this piece. You can see that it is in very rough shape. That paint, as much as it did it no justice, by removing all that paint, I'm now left with what the desk was and basically the reason why it was painted. So the task at hand is now going to be to bleach the seat top and the desktop to unify the colors and hopefully get out some of those deeper stains and sand everything down so it's nice and smooth or as smooth as I can get it while keeping a lot of the character of the piece. It is an old piece. It's likely between 1960 and 1970 when these desks were made out of wood before they were made out of plastics and metal. So I definitely don't want to remove all of its character, but in order for me to achieve the tan wash that we are going for, I need to smooth out some of these imperfections in order to achieve that look. Okay, so I have taken everything apart. This is not coming apart. This is really quite secured on, so I'll just leave that as is. Everything else needed to come apart. The joints were no longer in contact with one another. There was a lot of paint in between the joints, so it was preventing the piece from sticking together correctly. So everything is nicely taken apart. Um, and now I can go ahead and start scraping everything and just all the res rest of the paint that didn't come off. Now that I have everything apart, it's so much easier to do that. And then I will proceed with sanding. To prepare this piece for sanding, I needed to make sure that the piece was completely free of any leftover paint or finish. Uh, unfortunately, the stripper did not remove everything, so I waited for the piece to be fully dried before going in with my scrapers. For this, I ended up using my triangle scraper and my one inch scraper blade from Baco. I absolutely love carbide blades. I use them for every single project that I work on. They are long lasting, they are affordable, and they can be resharpened using a whetstone. So definitely worth checking out if you are looking to have something in your shop that is a must have tool for you as a refinisher. Okay, so everything is scraped back. Lots of damage on these two pieces here. So I'll definitely be doing some oxalic acid on this piece. I'm going to be doing a tan wash over this piece. So everything needs to be nice and even for that to happen. Next up is sanding. For the entirety of this project, I decided to use my surf prep sander. Even though this sander is small, it does an absolutely fantastic job at cutting through old finishes. It can get into really tight spaces and I can add the option of a sponge. If I need to sand some curves, then I'm not affecting the curve itself when I'm sanding. Best guess I am going to make is that this desk is made out of solid maple. And so I have a little bit of wiggle room when I'm sanding this. If this was a veneer, I would have to be a lot more gentle and less aggressive on the grit of sandpaper that I use. So for this entire project, I started with an 80 grit sandpaper just to really cut through some of those deeper stains and discolorings. And then I worked my way up from 80 to 120 grit 
and then 150 grit with a finishing sand of 180 grit. I like to finish with hand sanding so that way it smooths out the grain in the direction of the grain so that when I apply my product, whether it be stain or paint, you're not going to see those circular marks or indentations that an electric sander would have left behind. When I know I'm going to be bleaching a project, I like to do a little bit of prep work prior to applying my oxalic acid. I just find that by prepping the piece prior to using the product to bleach it, I get a better end result. So in this scenario, you can see that the top of the desk and the seat are very badly damaged. And so I prepped it by doing an 80 grit sanding on it and then I did a 120 grit and then I proceeded to use the oxalic acid application after that. I ended up doing two applications of the bleach on this project. I could have gone for a third but I wasn't trying to get this desk back to absolute perfect. I wanted it to still have some character and have a little bit of a story left over. The client who brought this piece to me picked this up a couple of years ago at a garage sale and she's going to be using it in her home for her littles as they proceed through schooling years so it doesn't need to be perfect but it needs to be pretty darn good and so by bleaching it getting it back to neutral it gives a beautiful clean slate for me to be able to apply this beautiful tan wash onto it after about 30 minutes i rinsed off the oxalic acid with water just to neutralize the acid and i did that two or three times just to make sure that it was really clean and the surface was ready for sanding i let it air dry and then proceeded with next steps I'm really happy with how this bleached up. I will let all of this dry now, and then I will come back with a 120 grit, a 150 and a 180 to finish in preparation for the whitewash. And then once all of that is done, I will start to put it back together and then I can top coat it and then this piece is done and I can move on to the next for the summer promo projects. So all the sanding is done. I'm going to be tan washing with this beautiful color by Beauty Tone named Fossil Tan. And to make a tan wash, it's really simple. You're just going to add four parts water to one part paint. So it becomes really loose. Then you're going to use a brush and brush it on. So I'm going to just measure out using my cups here. So that way, if I need more, I know exactly how much I've got. So this is a quarter cup. So a quarter cup of paint to a cup of water. And I like this measurement because it's nice and easy to remember four parts water one part paint. With more water, it obviously makes the paint solution thinner. So you get a really runny paint solution, just colored water basically. The less water that you add into the mixture, the less dilute the paint will be. So you'll get more paint application when you do your first application of it. So taking a nice clean rag, okay, so make sure your wood is clean and free of any debris and I'm just gonna wipe it on. And you take your cloth and just wipe it back. Isn't that pretty? So it leaves just enough color. Oops. And really neutralizes that yellow. When you're wiping back, always make sure to go in the direction of the grain. 
There you go. Now here comes the really fun part, putting everything back together. And sometimes this goes really great and then sometimes this doesn't go great at all. It all depends on the piece. This went back fairly quickly, but there were a couple times when I did have to take it apart again, simply because I put on the wrong screw or I put the screw in backwards and it wasn't supposed to be that way. So there was a lot of times where I had to reference my initial photos to make sure I was putting it all back together correctly. But it all went back together and it looks fantastic. So whew, thank goodness for that. Since this piece is going to be used for children, I made sure to add several layers of top coats. So that way it really stood the test of time and stood up to the abuse that children often put pieces of furniture through. I used a non-yellowing top coat so that way it would not amber over time and change the color of the tan wash. This little desk sure has gone through an amazing transformation. And when I shared the after photos with the client, she was so happy with it. And I even got an enthusiastic thumbs up from her little man who will be using the desk moving forward for school this year, which makes me the happiest refinisher ever. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. I have so many more projects to showcase from my summer Save the Labor promo, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Links for tools and products that I used on this project can be found in the description box below. And if you'd like to show your support, you can also go ahead and buy me a coffee. I'll be back in two weeks time to showcase another project with you. In the meantime, please feel free to check out some of my other videos and see you guys very soon.